really is magnificent. Wild, wild landscape. Day one of our trekking adventure in Upper Mustang, Nepal. Look at that. So there's Pokhara, Pokhara Airport. That's the view. Imagine waking up to mountains like that surrounding you every morning. It's a beautiful morning. Yeah, it's fresh, crisp. Day one, the adventure begins. We are flying to Jomsom. Day one, Bill. How are you feeling? Great. Uh, not at all. Her. <laughs> Day one, adventure begins. Up a Mustang, here we come. The flights are limited to the early morning due to the high winds that build up in the afternoon. Jomsom is the starting point and the end point for many treks and adventures in the area, such as the Annapurna Circuit and the Jomsom Trek, and also for pilgrims heading to Muktinath. For us though, it's the start of the journey into the Upper Mustang, close to the Chinese border and Lomantang, the traditional capital of the Old Kingdom of Mustang. So after arriving in Jomsom, it's time to get the maps out and continue fine-tuning our route as we wait for the Jeep to take us to Kagbeni, where we're going to be starting our trekking, avoiding the incredibly dusty, busy stretch filled with busloads of pilgrims heading to Muktinath. Kagbeni, here we come, and uh, then we're going to start our, our walk. I think we've got about half our drive or so. Okay, so we're now at uh, Kagbeni, and up behind me, we've got First prayer wheel wall, magnificent. We've come from Jomsom. We opted to take a Jeep up because it'd be grim to walk on. It was just a big, wide, dusty road. There's still trekkers still walking on it, but I wouldn't fancy it. There's a, a real clash between with our, our first world arrogance, you know, wanting this place to remain the same and to remain a place that we can only walk to and the culture not to move on. And who are we to say that? And saying that, you know, it does. It does change these places forever and they lose tourism revenue, you know, with what, where people would have stopped at tea houses along the way or stopped for a tea or a coffee they don't as people are driving straight up. So now the, the youth are leaving, there's less people working the land the young kids don't want to raise horses anymore so that whole entire lifestyle has literally stopped since these roads came into it and now people can do just jeep tourism i just want to get walking now i just want to get up into the hills and you know have nothing else to do but but walk immersed in the environment and the culture and the mountains it's just fantastic so from here Cag Benny we're now going to be walking up to Chile got about 10k of walking roughly 2700 meters now and we're going to finish today at 3050 meters okay just have a look up here at these rock formations very very soft rock so it all just gets washed away oh here we go we've got a friend for the day the obligatory trekking dog you find one on every trek and they tend to follow you from village to village <laughs> and then when just one day they're gone <laughs> the landscape is absolutely amazing very arid there's hardly ever any rain up here we're in the rain shadow of Annapurna. Amazing lands, it's, very, it's like a moonscape, so it's very dry. Okay, so this is yeah. Kinga. Yeah. About this is the first time I've trekked with Kinga. So anyway, I thought we'd ask him a bit more about himself. I started my trekking life from 2015, yeah? Yep. Um, five, five years, I do, um, I do a quarter life. Yep. And after four years, uh, from 2019, I started my guide. And so what were you doing before that? Uh, I do a small shop in Kathmandu, yeah? Yeah. And after college, I finished my college life yeah. and I started my trekking life. Okay. Yeah, badminton, and badminton's big here, isn't yeah. it? I know how to play chess, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Like I am, I'm an all-rounder, yeah? Yeah, yeah. A little bit I play football too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
it takes away some of the magic of the mountains when you're being passed by both and cars and is there anything good about the roads for the Nepali people who live here? Huh? Do they want roads or they don't want roads? They want road, yeah, because they carry a lot of food, yeah. It feels so good to be out of the Jeep and finally trekking. We're still on the road at the moment a fair amount of the time, but it's a lot quieter than the road between Johnson and Cagbeni, and the landscape makes it all worthwhile. So we've just stopped here at Tengbi for lunch. Yeah, we've got about another three hours to go. It's definitely cooled down. The sun's high, the, the wind has got right up. Just show you around. There you go, family photos. Anyway, I'd better get off, catch up with the other guys. So you see here, this whole arid area, no wildlife. And then here, you've got this oasis. They're running, pumping water with generators. Then in here, they're growing a local crop. The high crop is apples, but they also grow uh, buckwheat, uh, wheat, and uh, potatoes. And it does, it looks, looks magical. It is like a proper, proper little oasis. I must say, every time I look around here, I am just truly blown away by the, the landscape, the, the raw, rugged beauty of this place. It is just, it's absolutely mind-blowing. It really is magnificent. Wild, wild landscape. These guys down here in the field, they're all communally making straw, what's going to be used for a whole multitude of purposes. Arrived at Chile, tired but happy after just under five hours of trekking. It's been a really great first day. I can feel the altitude, but it feels good. Change of clothes, change into my evening clothes. And now it's time for some ginger tea, dal bar. So it's great to be back in a proper tea house. Plan for tomorrow and then off to bed. Join me and Bill tomorrow on our most awesome adventure as we head up to the picturesque village of Samar on our way up to Lomantang. On the way you can expect to see more stunning landscapes and stunning views of both Dalagiri and Annapurna.